Hello, it's the 20th of October today. Um, I'm sorry I haven't seen you for a while, but I've been working full time. I've been leaving uh, home in the dock and I've been coming back and it's just been getting dark. So um, I have been unable to come down the allotment, even at the weekends, because the weekends have been completely manic as well. So I've got a day off today, which is fantastic. Um, so I am down here um, on the allotment. In fact, next week is half term, so I will have lots of time for you, so that's great. But what I'm gonna show you today are my butternut squash and my pumpkins. Uh, because they're all and my other squashes because they're all ready to come up now um, Make sure you get them in before your last or oh, sorry before your first frost date uh, And in the UK that can usually be sort of well, From anywhere this sort of time onwards if we have a very cold start to uh, to sort of mid um, autumn we can get a frost sort of early to mid October but usually it's from like November onwards. Um, the butternut squash haven't done nowhere near as well as they did last year but then I didn't feed them as much as I did last year but I've still got lots of they're all little ones uh, but that's fine because they can roast whole. So um, let me show you how you can tell when they're all ready to come up. Now you can see them here, as you can see, they are all quite small this year, but that's fine. I don't mind that at all. Um, you can tell when your butternut squash and your pumpkins and all your other squashes are ready to come up because the leaves and the stems all turn brown and they all lose that bright green. Once this happens, then um, these aren't going to grow anymore. Um, sometimes the skins will still be a little bit on the pale side but that's absolutely fine don't worry about it some of them would have turned sort of a, a darky orange color but all you need to do is harvest these and then you can store them in a frost free place so to harvest these it's very simple all you do is you get your secateurs or you get a knife and you find the stem of the butternut squash there it is there and you just cut it like that it's quite tough so um, make sure that you have a decent knife but be careful not to um, cut your fingers but uh, secateurs are usually the best and if they've got a little bit of mud on the bottom don't worry just get that off and there is the first butternut squash that I'm going to harvest today I'm going to harvest all the rest and then I will show them to you. Right, well here are all the butternut squash this year. As I say, they are all really tiny. tiny. I think this is my smallest one um, ever that I have grown. But even though they're small, um, they're absolutely fine. You just roast them whole and then you can just cut them and then just scoop out the filling. Really, really lovely. You'll most probably notice that this one uh, has got stripes on it and it's um, it's still quite green. The reason for this is that the um, the outer skin just hasn't gone um, as thick as the orange ones have. It was actually on the end of the plant uh, which was still a little bit greener than the rest of it but I'm not going to just leave that one on because that's silly. Um, it's not going to grow any bigger. Just over the next couple of weeks it will turn um, sort of into this uh, sort of orangey colour but I'll harvest that one um, and in fact that skin will most probably I'll be able to eat that straight away. Um, it won't be too hard. Now in this one here I I've got a nice little selection of um, some other squashes as well. There's a little Turk's turban there uh, and a, a, a long one, some round ones and some um, some little sort of white, white ones here. Uh, now, uh, the other thing I want to do is harvest the pumpkins. So let's do that. Now I've actually got six pumpkins that I need to harvest. I didn't grow many plants, I think I only grew, grew six plants. So I've got one um, pumpkin per plant. This is my biggest one here. I've got no massive ones this year, uh, but this is a good size, this one. So when I get home, I'll weigh it on the bathroom scales to actually see how much it weighs. And then I'll let you know. Um, I've got 
This isn't my smallest one. I've got one that's slightly smaller than that. And then the other ones are in between these two sizes. Now, again, like the butternut squash, you know when your pumpkins are ready to harvest because the leaves um, and the stems will lose all their green. So um, once this happens, then all you need to do um, is harvest them and then place them in a frost-free place and exactly the same as um, with the butternut squash you need to cut off uh, where the stem is but make sure that you leave as much stem as you possibly can uh, just then it gives you something to hold on to um, this little bit of stem will also then um, sort of dry out if you cut it too low then the pumpkin might start to go a bit moldy in here um, but if you give it a decent amount of, of stem at least I would say an inch if you possibly can uh, then the stem will go sort of dry and the pumpkin will stay um, stay lovely and and hard and in fact if you tap them they sound hollow inside so I'll harvest all six of these and then I'll show you what I've got right so here are my six pumpkins uh, I say six I can only use five actually because I've got one here which actually has split and uh, lots of um, creepy crawlies have gone inside and decided to eat it so I'm gonna actually discard this because I expect they've gone in a very very long way so I most probably won't be able to, to use this one at all but that doesn't matter that's actually the tiniest one so that can go on the compost heap but uh, that now is my smallest one I've got a lovely funny shaped one with something that somebody said look like a sea on there uh, and a couple of these ones this one's um, again a bizarre shape uh, and this one is my big one so um, I'm really pleased with those um, I will carve most probably the big one maybe um, and then I'll make all sorts of lovely things with the other ones right well I've just harvested the last of the radishes these were the black radishes they've been phenomenal they seem to be much better than the, the sort of the red ones that we're used to. They have a very, very small window before they actually then go to seed. These black ones are, are brilliant. Um, these, in fact, I haven't been down the allotment for two and a bit weeks, possibly. Um, and none of these have gone to seed and they've just got really nice. There's no sign of woodiness at all in them. So I'm really, really impressed with them. One has split. Uh, but that's obviously because we got a lot of water and it just split, but that's fine I'll just cut that bit off and give them a good clean and then they'll they'll be fine But um, yes, I'll be growing the black ones again, and they're actually really quite hot um, I've also um, harvested um, a few cabbages some that have actually started to shoot up um, And the chickens can have those like this Waste not want not, you know, they'll love that um, and I've also got um, one for us a white one and also I've harvested the first of the red ones they are still quite small but I thought I would just um, harvest them just to see uh, how they're getting on when you harvest your cabbages just uh, you can either pull the whole lot out of the ground and then chop the root off or you can get your secateurs and you can just uh, cut it off and just lift the head off and leave the root in it's entirely up to you um, so that's those um, just a, a short little trip down the allotment I just need to do a bit of weeding but um, I need to go home now I've done quite a lot this morning actually uh, even though I've not been down here for long but um, I've got done what I wanted to get done so that's really good well I hope you found what I've shown you useful and I look forward to seeing you soon bye bye